Good day, everyone. So our topic for today is about redox. So redox is known as a reduction, oxidation, reaction. I am Dr. Erwin R. Alvenson. So for our learning outcomes, uh, first is uh, differentiate reduction in oxidation or reaction. So as we go along with the discussion, we'll be oriented properly with what reduction and what is oxidation or reaction is. And identify steps in writing the balance reaction of redox reaction. And write correct chemical equations for redox reactions. So for our um, lesson outline, so first is we are going to discuss oxidation number or known as oxidation states. And then um, steps on how to, to determine a reduction oxidation reaction and how to balance a redox reaction. So all of these are um, to be tackled later on. And of course, you'll be needing your knowledge about a balancing of equation. If you have uh, watched my previous video, I discussed there the different types of chemical reactions as well as how to balance each chemical equation and as well as stoichiometry. Okay, so uh, all chemical reactions can be assigned uh, to two classes. So uh, the one class of chemical reaction is known as a redox or oxidation or reduction or sometimes known also as a reduction oxidation in which electrons are transferred from one reacting species to another. So the other class includes all other reactions in which no electron transfer occurs. So the five types of chemical reactions that we tackled before on my, uh, on my previous video can be classified into these classes. So again, the first class is, or the one class is the redox reaction, and the other class are all other types of reactions that are not redox. Okay, so madaling lang naman tandaan. Uh, first, redox, the other one is not redox. And uh, many single replacement reaction, uh, if you will remember the, the one with the equation like AB plus X uh, will produce AX plus B. Uh, combination, you know, A plus B will form AB. Decomposition, AB will be decomposed into A plus B and combustion reactions are all redox reactions. So later on, you will know why they are considered to be as uh, redox reactions and examples of example of that is this one no potassium metal reacts violently with water to produce hydrogen gas and potassium hydroxide so that is an example of um redox reaction that we can see um, in a laboratory and uh, as i've said many single replacement reactions combination reactions decomposition reactions and combustions are redox so another example we have zinc metal reacts vigorously with hydrochloric acid to produce hydrogen gas and zinc chloride so uh, we can easily write that so zinc plus hcl will produce uh, ZNCl plus H2. Okay, oh, of course, you have to balance it. So examples of redox of reactions that are not redox reaction include double replacement reaction and acid-based reaction. So uh, why is it that they are not considered as a redox? So later on, you'll know. Okay. So these are the things that you have to remember for you to say or for you to identify whether the reaction is oxidation or reduction. So if it is oxidation, uh, you have to remember uh, loss, loss, gain. No? Loss of electrons, uh, it's not loss, loss, gain. It is uh, gain, gain, loss, or loss, gain, gain. A uh, loss of electrons, gain of oxygen, and gain of oxidation number because uh, if there's a, a gain, then there's increase. Or you can stick to this one, no? So gain loss increase. So gain of oxygen, loss of electrons, increase in oxidation number, they are considered to be as oxidation. And if it is a reduction, it is loss of oxygen, gain of electrons, and decrease in oxidation number. Now, um, tandaan nyo din na in a redox reaction, may tinatawag tayo na oxidizing agent and then reducing agent. So 
uh, opposite lang yon if the if the element is reduced so that is the oxidizing agent if it is uh, oxidized then it is the reducing agent okay so later on you know uh, in our next examples the so first thing first uh, before we go on to redox uh, we have to learn first how to assign oxidation number. Now, uh, in, in your periodic table, there are already pre-assigned oxidation number. Wherein, if you if you uh, look into it, tama naman, no? Uh, however, you have also to realize that uh, there are certain rules that we can follow in order for you to determine the oxidation number in a compound or in an element without looking into the periodic table. Uh, first is, yeah, a, uh, oxidation number is also known as oxidation state. Yan yung may positive or negative, or zero. Okay, so it is defined as the charge the atom would have if electrons were not shared but were transferred completely. That's why in the redox, di ba, mayroon doon gain, uh, gain electrons, gain uh, lose electrons, or increasing uh, atom in in oxidation number or decrease in oxidation number. So it is defined, yeah, uh, for a binary compound, uh, let's say uh, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, or it could also be, it could also be the, uh, it could also be other compounds like magnesium chloride and so on. So for a binary ionic compound, uh, the, the oxidation number is equivalent to the ionic charge. Ionic charge of the element during the, the formation of the compound. So for covalent compounds or uh, polyatomic ions, uh, by the way, the carbon dioxide a while ago that I said, uh, I, I wasn't able to realize that what I'm reading is ionic compounds. So uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide are not ionic compounds, so they are covalent compounds. So now, for covalent compounds or polyatomic ions, yung polyatomic ions, yung like sulfate, sulfide, phosphate, phosphite, nitrate, nitrite, carbonate, and so on. The oxidation number is less obvious and can be determined by a given set of rules. So, iba yung polyatomic ions. However, ang polyatomic ions kasi ay in a reactions ay hindi nagbabago yung kanilang oxidation number. So, it will not help you whether, uh, even if you will look into the oxidation number of that, no, ang kailangan mo tingnan ay yung mga monoatomic ions natin. So, uh, the oxidation number of an atom in an element is zero. So when an element is alone, even if it is diatomic, like sinulat mo Mg, so it's ox uh, since it is in a, in a ground state, its oxidation number is zero. Uh, you, the, the element, especially if it is an ionic compound, will, will only uh, become charged or there will be an increase in the oxidation number if there will if the element will go into react with another element to form a compound. But kapag sinulat mo lang siya ng solo, even if may subscription na to, dahil siya yung diatomic, its oxidation number is zero. Okay, so like Mg in Mg or O in O2. So uh, I want you to look into this. No, The oxidation number of an atom is in a compound add up to zero. In a compound, pag ini-add mo yung, ano, yung kanyang oxidation number, dapat zero siya. Okay, so oxidation state of C and carbon dioxide. So look at this one. So um, the oxidation state of O2 here is negative 4. So what number should you add so that uh, this 4, uh, this, the charge will be 0 since it is a compound? Kasi pag compound, charge na is 0. Kapag nagkaroon niya ng charge, Hindi na siya, hindi siya compound. Siya ay uh, maklaklasify as polyatomic ion. Like phosphate, PO4, negative 3. Uh, sulfate, SO4, negative 2. Carbonate, CO3, negative 2. And so on and so forth. Yung mga ginamit natin before, dun sa previous video natin about how to write chemical equation or how to write chemical uh, compounds. So in this case, it is carbon dioxide. Uh, it has no charge since, since it is a compound already. So the uh, the one given here is that oxygen has a charge of negative 4 uh, dahil may subscription na 2. No? So plus 4 
a positive for Instagot because if that is the number that should be added to negative four, so that it will become zero. Okay, so yeah, just put the positive sign. How about this one? Oxidation state of magnesium in magnesium chloride. So you might ask, sir, magnesium is solo. No, it's not solo. Magnesium is with chlorine. Okay, so that is magnesium chloride. So um, you have to, one technique that I can share with you is that you have to reverse the process. You think of paano na buo yung MgCl. Okay, so Mg, di ba? Mg has a charge of positive 2. Cl has a charge of negative 1. No naging compound sila, it is MgCl2. Then therefore, um, the charge of, of magnesium is positive 2. Okay? Because uh, the formula is MgCl2. Uh, Cl is negative 1, Mg is positive 2. Now, oxidation state of N in in H3 or ammonia. So ammonia is not a polyatomic ion. Ang polyatomic ion is ammonium, yung NH4 positive 1. So it is negative 3 because that's the number that you can add to hydrogen. You have to remember, uh, hydrogen is a metal. So its charge is positive 1. E tatlo yung subscript niya. So it's positive 3. So what number should be added to positive 3 so that its charge will become 0? It's negative 3. So, oxidation state of S in SO4, negative 2. So, SO4, negative 2 is sulfate, a polyatomic ion. So, the charge of oxygen is negative 8. So, what number should be added so that the, the charge will become negative 2? Because the charge of SO4 is negative 2. Kahit patingnan nyo sa periodic table natin. So, the number there is positive 6 because positive, positive 6 minus 8 is negative 2, which is the charge of SO4, all right? So oxidation state of S and S2 negative. So obviously, wala kang ibang gagawin. Titingnan mo lang. The, the charge is negative 2. So its, it's oxidation state is negative 2. Oxidation state of N in NH4 positive, positive 1. So di ba kanina, it's NH3, that's ammonia. This one, it is ammonium ion. Ammonium ion is a polyatomic ion. So NH4, positive 1. So it's negative 3 for the N because uh, for hydrogen, it is positive 4. So negative 3 uh, plus no, uh, positive 4. So may may iwan na isa. May may iwan na isang, uh, isang charge which is positive. Mas lamang yung, yung positive ch charge niya kaysa sa negative charge. So then therefore, the charge is positive 1 for NH4. Okay? So yan. So I hope that it is clear. Uh, and again, ang kailangan mo lang tandaan is you should have always with you your periodic table. Sa mga ano, sa mga, sa mga family A, madali lang tingnan dahil uh, kung ano yung kanyang family, that is the usual charge. No? Uh, pag metal, well, positive, uh, family 1, A2, A3, A. So kadalasan yun, it's, it's positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. Then from, from family 7 pabalik, so it's negative 1, negative 2, kasunod yung 6. Then uh, yung kasunod na kasi is, ano, is um, considered already as uh, majority of them are uh, metalloids. No? But then again, uh, madali naman tingnan provided that you know the, the charge of the other compounds because if it is a compound, the charge when you add up no, should be equal to zero. Kasi pag nagkaroon pa yun ng charge after you, you sum it up, ibig sabihin, hindi pa tapos na reactions and the compound is not yet stable. Yun. Or halimbawa naman, uh, after computing, you found out na there's a charge pa din. So it's not a compound, baka polyatomic ion yan. Okay? So just like uh, ammonium ion, like this one, H4, positive 1. So uh, for your review for this um, topic, oxidation number, I want you to determine the oxidation number of each of the given element in a compound. 
exclude the polyatomic ions it present in a compound. So wag niyo nang hanapin yung sa polyatomic ion. I'm just looking for uh, may dalawa ko na isang polyatomic ion diyan. So bahala na kayo maghanap kung alin, no? So mahalaga naman is that you use this one to review the previous concept about oxidation number. All right? So you can pause this video so that you can be able to go back to the previous discussion if you think that this is not enough. Or you may still look for other videos to satisfy your needs in this topic. Now, let us now move on to identifying the redox reaction. So um, a while ago, we've said that there are two classes of reactions. The first reaction is redox. The second one is not a redox. Now, what should you know so that you'll be able to identify whether the reaction is a redox or not? Well, you have first, no, you have you, you have to know the one that I discussed a while ago, the the loss gain gain and then the loss increase gain and then the loss loss and uh, gain the other one, no. So use the change in oxidation number to identify whether each reaction is a redox reaction or a reaction of some other type. If a reaction is a redox reaction, identify the element reduce, the element oxidize, the reducing agent, and the oxidizing agent. So as I've said kanina, if the element is reduced, that element is the oxidizing agent. If the element is oxidized, that is the reducing agent. So, hindi ka na madiligaw. That is always the opposite. Because one, one element causes uh, the reaction on the other element. So, when you say reduction, the other is oxidation. Now, we have two examples here which um, I want you to look into if it is balanced or not. So, letter A is Cl2 plus 2NABR forming 2 NaCl plus Br2. So is the reaction balance. Then letter B natin is 2 NaOH plus H2SO4 form Na2SO4 plus 2H2O. Now, of course, you can read this like this. So chlorine uh, is added to sodium bromide form sodium chloride and bromine. So something like that. Then letter B is uh, sodium hydroxide is combined with sulfuric acid formed sodium sulfate plus water. Okay, so uh, we are going to follow certain steps in order for us to answer this. Now, the first step is identifying the relevant concept. So what are these relevant concepts? So it changes in oxidation number of four, the reaction is a redox reaction. So that means... Uh, first thing is you have to identify whether there's a change, if there's a change in the oxidation number. So that's why a while ago I asked you to, to perform a test about oxidation number. So if changes in oxidation number of four, the reaction is a redox reaction. And the, if there's none, then therefore it is not a redox reaction. And then you can move on to the next number. So I wish no, na it is not a, a redox reaction so that you can move on to the next. The element whose oxidation number increases is oxidized, just like what we have uh, defined a while ago. And that element is the reducing agent. And the element whose oxidation number decreases is reduced and is the oxidizing agent. Okay, so if there's an increase or decrease, but first thing first, we have to determine whether it is redox. So the second one is to solve and apply the concept to this situation. So the concept that we have discussed in step number one. So first thing is you have to assign oxidation number. So I have assigned here oxidation number. For Cl, it is zero. Um, one of the ruling that we tackled a while ago, if it is alone, if it is in ground state, ground state, it is zero, okay? Now, uh, the second one is a compound. So therefore, it has charge for each element forming the compound. It is cation and an ion forming a binary ionic compound. So sodium is positive one, as we all know. In, uh, sodium belongs to family 1A. And bromine belonging to family 7A has a charge of negative one. When you add one, positive one and negative one, and it is zero. 
right? Now, uh, on the other hand, uh, NACL, uh, the other one is NABR. For the product, you have their NACL. So NA is positive one, CL is negative one. So bromine and chlorine both belong on the same family, 7A. So both of them have a charge of negative one. And bromine has a charge of zero because it is in ground state in the product. After assigning, uh, of course, you have to double check whether your answer is right. And I think your answer is right. And then you can move on to the next. You have to apply the concepts to this situation. So, ganun pa din, letter A. No? So, another one is interpret the change or lack of change in oxidation number to identify if the reaction is a redox reaction. This is a redox reaction. Why? Because if you'll notice, chlorine has a charge of zero from the reactant, became negative one um, in the product. So there's a change. Okay? Now, um, bromine, which is negative one in the reactant, uh, became zero in the in the product, okay? So in sodium, nothing happens because from positive one, it is still positive one. But uh, you have to remember also that in a reaction, if one is, if one is, one is um, an oxidation reaction, the other one is a reduction reaction. If one is reduced and then the other one is oxidized. So for chlorine, since it is zero, going to negative one, it is reduced. Okay. Now, from bromine, uh, from reactant negative one, then it became zero. So the bromine ion or the bromide ion is oxidized. Then, therefore, if chlorine is the oxidizing agent, um, chlorine is the oxidizing agent because chlorine is reduced. And bromine ion is the reducing agent because the bromine ion is oxidized. So as I've said, it is just an opposite of it. Now, um, okay. So second na tayo. Ganun lang yun, no? Uh, let's go back. Um, your task is only to identify which is reduced and which is oxidized. Which is the oxidizing agent and which one is the reducing agent. Did we answer it? Yes. Chlorine, reduce, oxidizing agent. Bromine, oxidize, reducing agent. So that's why we can move on to the next part, which is the second um, equation. So we have here uh, NaOH plus H2SO4 forming Na2SO4 and water. So I uh, will follow the same step. First step is assign the oxidation number. So sodium is positive 1, oxygen is negative 2, hydrogen is positive 1. So santo ng galing in the periodic table. Okay? Now, in... As for sulfuric acid, we have hydrogen positive one, SO4 positive six, and uh, S for SO4 is negative is positive six, and oxygen for SO4 is uh, negative two. So for Na2SO4 the charge of Na2 is positive one, and for SO4, it is positive six and negative one. And then for H2O, it is positive one and negative two. So we compute it. It should be two. Ito on the other one. So four. Uh, 
correct. However, regardless of that, uh, we can see that there is no change in the oxidation number. All right. So if there's a change, if there is no change in the oxidation number, then therefore it is not a redox reaction because both retain um, the same number. By the way, the SO4 there for Na2SO4, the charge is negative two for oxygen. Okay, so there's no change in in the in the charge. Okay. So, uh, as I've said, as, no, uh, during the beginning of the discussion, um, single replacement combination and as decomposition combustion reactions are redox, but um, double replacement since there is an there is there are four variables and they the tendency is to exchange partners or to exchange the uh, the reactants for the formation of the product then therefore the the charge will will uh, no, will be conserved you know, just like this one so i think um if you know that the reaction is a double decomposition or double double replacement, then therefore no need for it to solve. However, if you are asked to, to do so, to, to assign, at least you have an idea that it is not redox. No? First thing, first glance, ah, this one is a double decomposition. This is a double replacement. Uh, this is not a redox, but you have to prove it. You have to assign uh, you have to assign um, oxidation number, okay? So, in that case, for activity 6B, use the change in oxidation number to identify whether each reaction is a redox reaction or a reaction of some other type. So, um, though you can be able to determine that just, just by looking, no, you have to look into whether it is it is a, re um, a redox by assigning the oxidation number. So you can easily notice that if there's no change in the oxidation number, then therefore it is not a redox reaction. However, if you were able to identify the that it is a redox, no, please identify also the oxidation um, the the the, el the element that is oxidized, reduced, oxidizing agent, and reducing agent. So let us now move on to balancing of redox equations. So the one that the there are a lot of methods to balance that, but I'll be teaching you the first one, which is using oxidation number changes. Since um, from the very beginning, what we are talking about is about oxidation number changes. So in the oxidation number change method, you balance a redox equation by comparing the increases and decreases in oxidation numbers. But you have to remember also that you should know how to balance the equation itself. That's why you have to master the previous topic, which is balancing of chemical equation. So um, using oxidation number changes, to use this method, start with the skeleton equation for the redox reaction. So our given here is um, iron 3 oxide plus carbon monoxide forming iron plus carbon dioxide, which is unbalanced. Um, the conditions like this, in a blast furnace, air is blown through a combination of iron, ore, and coke. The carbon monoxide produced from the oxidation of coke reduces the um, iron ions to metallic iron, okay? So iron three ions, no? To metallic iron. So we will follow certain steps. Step one is to assign oxidation numbers to all atoms in the equation. So again, um, napaka-relevant nung first activity, which is the oxidation number. So write the numbers above the atoms. So 
Then the oxidation numbers is stated per atom. So I have indicated there. So positive 3, negative 2, positive 2, negative 2, 0, positive 4, and negative 2. So you'll notice there, no? For Fe2, it is positive 3. For O3, it is negative 2. Uh, because that is positive 3 times 2 plus uh, the product of negative 2 times 3. Okay? And then for CO, it is positive 2 minus 2. So it's 0 also. For iron, metal, uh, for, for iron, you have their 0 because, uh, again, it is in ground state. And then for, for carbon dioxide, the charge of carbon is positive 4. And the charge of oxygen is negative 4. You have to consider the subscript of oxygen, which is 2. 2 times negative 2. When you add it with uh, to positive 4, the, char the charge is also 0. Okay? So, yun. so uh, since now that you have the right oxidation number, you can proceed to the next. Which is identify which atoms are oxidized and which are reduced. Just like what we did in the second activity. So iron is reduced because from positive 3 to 0, okay? Carbon ox is oxidized because from positive 2, it became positive 4. So there's an increase. Remember, no, if there's an increase, it is leading towards the positivity or the positive value. Leading to, huh? If it is... Um, Decrease if there's a if there's a decrease, so they're leading to zero to negative. No, so in here you have here uh, positive three to zero. So there is a reduction. So there's a uh, reduce. Then for carbon, it became positive four. There's an increase in the oxidation number. So. Uh, you can still, no, you can still uh, add more. Iron is now the oxidizing agent and carbon is the reducing agent. So third step, use one bracketing line to connect the atoms that undergo oxidation in another such line to connect those that undergo reduction. So write the oxidation number change at the midpoint of each line. So just like this one. So iron is negative three. So reduction, so there's a gain of uh, three electrons. And then um, oxidation, because there is an additional um, positive two from carbon positive two to become carbon positive four. So that's the third step. And then this time you are going to balance it. No? So make the total increase in oxidation number equal to the total decrease in the oxidation number by using appropriate coefficient. Again, the lowest possible number. No? So lagging simplest form. So the oxidation number increase should be multiplied by 3 and the decrease by 2. So that's why if you multiply um, for iron, no? so it's 2 times negative 3, it will become negative 6. So of course you have to write no you have to write the coefficient and then on the other hand it is three times positive two equals positive six so positive six minus six for the for the iron it is zero okay so in that case you have written there the coefficient so three for CO two for iron and three for CO two now um is this step enough of course, even though you can be able to identify na there is a balance already with positive 6 and negative 6, you can still move on to the step number 5. By, um, by finishing the balancing of equation by inspection. So inspect mo pa din. Even though you are quite sure on the fourth step, better to double check it. No? Uh, other students may do, may write all, no? They, they write all the atoms of the reactants and then the, the subscript and then 
uh, yeah, the, the number of atoms of each of each reactant and then the number of atoms of each product then multiplying by the coefficient and then total each no but again you can just do inspection like this iron on the left is 2 iron on the right is 2 iron on the left is uh, oxygen on the left is 3 and then 3 for iron uh, for ferric oxide then 3 from carbon monoxide so 3 plus 3 is 6 um oxygen from CO2 is 6 because 3 coefficient times times 2 is 6. So th that is oxygen. Okay, so 6 sa product for the oxygen, 6 sa reactant. Okay, 3 plus 3. Then carbon is 3 from the reactants and 3 also from the products. So that's how you inspect it. But if you have other ways of uh, balancing it, or of checking whether the equation is balanced, then therefore make sure to follow that, okay? If it is effective. So for the last activity, activity C, balance this redox equation by using the oxidation number change method. So the one that I've discussed a while ago. So you have here the sample, uh, C, uh, K2Cr2O7 plus H2O plus S, forming KOH plus Cr2O3 plus SO2, okay? So, for our references, this could serve as your guide if you think that um, the discussion is not enough or if you think that you would like to download all the other PowerPoints that I've used, you can use this, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. Keep safe.